welcome the filmmakers Cal Skaggs and David Van Taylor. Uh, can you start by telling me how this project came about? The project came about because one day Ali Pomeroy said, why don't we do a history of documentary film? <laughs> that was the first step. I mean, we, not to dishonor Ali in any way, but we all have an idea a week for a wonderful film, and we all immediately throw it away three days later, uh, or we throw it away three years later when we realize we'll never raise any money for it. But this was one which took root. Um, that seed in my mind and David's mind, and uh, we went to work on it. And when we finished this first two, these two episodes, we realized that it was almost um, slightly over a year, uh, excuse me, slightly over 10 years from the day we did the first interview. So the first interview was done 10 years before we finished these. They were copyrighted in 2011. I did one last interview with D.A. Pennebaker uh, less than a year ago because he was the only person. David and Ali set out and did a lot of interviews with people they thought would not be with us and indeed are not with us, most of them. Uh, and honest to God, I just joked with somebody who was here who has a little bite in that little tease, that if he put up a couple hundred thousand dollars, I'd get that film made with him in it. That's Jay Freud, our great editor. Anyway, I was teasing, obviously. But the point is, we have done all the interviews. Literally, we have interviewed every single person in this country who was a part of observational documentary creation, and some of the French who are still living. Uh, Truman Gibson, who's a critical <laughs> character in, in, the, in the, uh, the story about the Negro soldier, and who was really one of the people who helped dream up that film, um, we arranged to interview him in his apartment in Chicago in, I don't remember what year now, but, um, uh, and Ali set the whole thing up, and we, we worked with a cameraman from Cartemquin, and uh, he was quite elderly at the time, and uh, we had arranged to uh, arrive at his apartment early and set up before he was sort of ready for his day. And I got there, and the door was open, and I like knocked, and I called out, and nobody answered, and nobody answered, and then I, so I wandered in a little further, and eventually I found him sitting on his on the edge of his bed where he had just had a mini stroke. And so then I had to like alert all of the people who we knew to come and get him help and et cetera. And uh, amazingly enough, a few months later he had recovered and- uh, You got the interview. And we got the interview, exactly. Uh, the, the, uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, watching, watching these films uh, in this context, it's uh, Quite striking. I mean, Ali just passed away, but I mean, the mortality rate of these films is quite high. I mean, there's very William few Greaves. Uh, we, we see there passed away last Greaves, year. Yeah. Uh, Robert Drew, whose voice we hear in the tease for the next episode, passed away last year. And those are the young guys. You know, the the, the earlier episodes have. Uh, yeah, Larry Levine is gone. Many many people are gone. So it's a history that uh, I'm glad we maybe captured. you know we made this we made these two films a while ago. And when um, we started working on them now, 15 years ago. And when I sat back there not having seen either one of them for, since 2012 here in this theater, I haven't screened those two films. I had this really strong sense that we are all just instruments, that documentary filmmakers are instruments. And I thought of all the struggles that Cindy and I had over that film, uh, the second episode, and what wonderful energy went into that struggle. And I thought of the struggle, I was sitting by Jay Freud, and I thought of all the struggles that he and I had in the films that we made together. But the feeling I had is that we are just voices, documentary filmmakers. I mean, we may go out and find these people and can persuade them and all that stuff, and we may struggle to build a nice structure out of the material. But essentially, what, what I felt tonight was, we're voices, we're instruments. We really do want to convey what we think is the real thing out there in the world. 
And in this case, it's the real thing of what people went through to get something on the screen that they thought then was true and important to say. And I, I, just, I just felt that so strongly this evening that I wanted to share it. Because I think that's the most important thing about documentary film and the history of documentary film. That these filmmakers, including probably 20% of this audience, is or 25% of the audience, consists of, documentary, <laughs> consists of documentary filmmakers. We're instruments, guys and girls. We're, we're instruments. We're, we're voices. And if we're good, we're clear, fine instruments. <laughs> and if we're good, we're pure voices. That's all I have to say. And, 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 and unfortunately, there were a few, uh, there, there was a lot of uh, relevance uh, to many things in this film, in these films. Um, not least of all, the, uh, the uh, NEH funding, which uh, is touted at the beginning, and the PBS broadcast, which was overly optimistically touted at the end of the film. So, uh, you know, we're, uh, all our voices, just like theirs, uh, continue to be in danger of being stifled at any point. The, the techniques that were pioneered here and the approach to filmmaking that were, was pioneered in kind of the second half of uh, episode two and, the, and, and all of episode three are in fact, um, you know, quite uh, dominant today. People are trying to make films that are in the Pere Lorenz tradition as beautiful as possible. They, go, they have a, you know, very often a propagandistic intent that they set out with from the beginning and follow up, uh, follow through on. Um, and, and uh, you know, there's a great, great emphasis on, uh, I mean, I was just talking to a guy the other day, yesterday at a, at a party who I happened to run into who was making a film on, uh, a documentary on organic farming. I don't think that gives anything away because I think there's probably 15 of them being made right now. But, you know, he was going on and on about the drone that he had bought and brought and bought and what amazing pictures he was getting out of it and uh, you know this is cinema and I think that's great but I think there's a tremendous emphasis on uh, that kind of high production value essentially um, so I, I, I actually see a lot of continuity here I, you know Tom Ar Hurwitz articulates in that trailer something that I think is is quite true but often not thought about the Verite Revolution or the Rex Cinema Revolution, which, you know, many times is portrayed as A, trying to get more closely to the truth and B, arriving at the technology that will allow you to do that. C, and maybe in a, they should be in a different order, is the fact that propaganda, you know, in the McCarthy era suddenly became a super dirty word, right? Like, way more than it had been before. And so there's a, there's a real benefit to submerging the idea of a point of view or submerging the idea of, a, of an agenda. And, and um, you know, and, and with happy results, I mean, I'm, uh, I, I love Cinema Verite uh, as much as the next guy, if not more, but I think in part it comes out of the idea that, oh, let's not tell the audience what to think. Um, you know, let's let's present things, and, and not that they were naive and thought that they were presenting things from a objective point of view, but let's present things in a way that lets the audience experience them rather than hearing what we have to say about them. I just know, and you know, I've been making films long enough to have gone from 16 millimeter to finally 35 millimeter to DV, you know, to video and the DV cam and on and on and on. And as you say, now it's on a computer. And I get concerned uh, about, you know, backups for things. Um, anyway. The 16 millimeter is in better it, shape. It doesn't, but it doesn't make it easier in some ways. Well, and Callie, you have plenty of experience in the making of this series to know that, you know, it's actually not uh, that easy to get a clean copy of The River, which was like a really important film. And I mean, you know, there were some issues with the projection here, but uh, it, and, and uh, the film, it all looks a little bit better than you saw on this screen. We can talk about that later. But, um, uh, but, but you know, these films are not, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to get well-preserved copies of many of it. And, and, and uh, I mean, in fact, the 
The Negro Soldier, which is an, a very important film subsequently neglected, you're, you're actually seeing the, um, the video, the picture from one preservation copy and hearing the track from another one because you, we couldn't find one where the two were optimized and we, so we put them together ourselves. Thanks especially to Cal Skaggs, Dave Van Taylor, and in memory, Ali Pomeroy.